Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, October 4. Government is a step closer to making the Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Task Force MOCA an independent law enforcement agency. On Tuesday, National Security Minister Robert Montague opened debate on the MOCA bill which was tabled by Prime Minister Andrew Holness earlier this year. MOCA will provide the sustained, focused, strong cross-cutting investigations and integrate complex legal, financial and personal data from diverse sources and jurisdictions which will aid in tracing and seizing the proceeds of organized crime over the long term. MOCA is expected to break the power of major criminals, eliminate the influence of facilitators and eradicate the pervasive corruption that allows criminality to flourish. Mr. Montague said he would be tabling a list of amendments to the bill to include the removal of the current provision for the MOCA Oversight Committee to hire staff as it deems necessary. The National Security Minister said the removal would eliminate any inclination for MOCA officers to investigate their colleagues should a complaint be made to the Oversight Committee. On the education front, there's been marked increases in students' performance in the Grade 4 Literacy and Numeracy tests, Numeracy moved up 7.1%, while literacy results improved by 5.5% over last year. While unveiling the figures Tuesday, Education Minister Ruel Reed said that of the more than 37,000 students who sat the exams on June 21 and 22 this year, over 95% achieved either mastery or almost mastery in literacy, over 90% also scored at either mastery or almost mastery in the numeracy test. We have had a very, very um, good year where we have seen improved results um, in all the exams that we have reported on this year. So we are trending in the right direction. The Agriculture Ministry is making $80 million available to help coffee farmers purchase fertilizers and fungicides in order to increase their level of productivity. Portfolio Minister Carl Samuda says the money will come from the Productivity Incentive Program and will also be used to provide capacity building and training programs for the farmers. It's expected to help move the productivity level of coffee from the current 20 boxes per acre to 80 boxes per acre. The assistance comes in the wake of farmers seeing reduced prices for their coffee, particularly to the major Japanese market. While deliberations continue with Japan, the minister is urging coffee dealers to take a multi-pronged approach to production and redouble their efforts to find alternative markets. What we want in this country is a coffee industry. We don't want only a Blue Mountain coffee industry. What we are going to insist on achieving is increased production of high mountain and lowland coffee. The objective will be to ensure that the coffee produced in Jamaica, blended or pure, is born of Jamaican soil, grown here in Jamaica. The Agriculture Minister was addressing a press briefing on Tuesday to provide an update on developments in the industry. Minister of Local Government and Community Development Desmond McKenzie says the country will have to spend just over $3 billion to recover from damage brought on by flood rains in April and May this year. Clarendon, St. Catherine and St. Anne were most affected, while St. Thomas, Portland and St. Elizabeth also suffered significant damage. Minister McKenzie says the $3 billion is being spent between the local municipal authorities and the National Works Agency. We, we are intending um, starting early next year to have a comprehensive assault on parochial roads across the country. Minister McKenzie was speaking with JIS News following Friday's meeting with a delegation from the United States Embassy. The meeting focused on disaster preparedness and management. The group explored the possibility of a simulation exercise related to Jamaica's continuation of government plan. Ideas were also exchanged on the structure and operations of the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency. We also, in the discussion, look at strengthening the capacity of the Jamaica Fire Brigade as our first respondent and we discuss other areas of mutual benefit, both to Jamaica and to the United States. 
JUTC sub-franchise holders have until October 13 to renew their road licenses. The extension was granted on Monday following the September 30 expiration of the JUTC sub-franchise road licenses. As a result, the Transport Authority's inspectorate and the police will exercise discretion by not prosecuting persons for operating without current road licenses. Even as the renewal extension has been granted, the authority is urging licensees to ensure that they meet the October 13 renewal deadline. And finally, former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller has been conferred with the Honorary Doctorate of Laws degree from the University of the West Indies for her contribution to government. In honoring my contribution to public life and my service in the political sphere, the UWI is in essence honoring the people of Jamaica. It is the attainment of their dreams and ambitions that I have pursued for nearly 50 years of political life. At Saturday's special convocation ceremony, the island's seventh prime minister confirmed that she had accepted the university's offer of being an honorary distinguished fellow. Through this engagement, I will seek to share my life's work with students, staff, and the people of Jamaica and the Caribbean. Mrs. Simpson Miller is expected to have an office at the institution. She will also be associated with the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, where she will write her memoir and other literary works. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.